Welcome to the Harbor Freight comprehensive sandblasting video. Whether you're wondering if this is the right device for you, or you've bought it and you're just trying to make it work better, you've come to the right place. Today, we're going to discuss everything that I've learned about this device to give you a single place where you can get all the information you need. At the end of this video, you'll be smarter than Scarecrow, and you'll have an honorary degree in making cheap sandblasters work great. When I first got this sandblaster, it was very frustrating. So frustrating, I made not just one, but two videos. The first video was a nine minute video talking about the basics to get you up and running with the stock setup. Today's video is gonna go much further. We're gonna revisit the concepts in the first video, but we're gonna ask the question, just how awesome can we make this sandblaster? It's a lot to cover. In the comments section, I'm gonna have a table of contents and there's gonna be blue hyperlink. So if you're interested in something, click on the link, it'll take you right to it. Let's get to work. If you wanna be successful, you need to pay attention to four areas. Your air supply, your abrasives, your setup, and your technique. If you pay attention to these items, you're gonna be successful. If you ignore them, you're asking for trouble. Ah! Let's start off with the most important part, air supply. Today's video is going to show you how the sandblaster works at different CFM rates. The sandblaster here lists the effective range of cutting between 6 and 25 CFM, but don't be fooled. 6 might not be enough for what you need. If you don't have 6, this device isn't even going to work. And at 6, this sandblaster is just going to barely work, and you might be better off sticking with a siphon feed gun. I want to quickly show you the compressors I use. The first is a 30 gallon, 5 to 6 CFM. It's not the biggest or the smallest, but for sandblasting, it's not enough. I got on Craigslist and was fortunate enough to find the duplicate for not a whole lot of money. This doubled my CFM, but at 10 to 12 CFMs, it still cuts slow. The latest compressor is a 60 gallon. That adds 10 to 11 more CFMs that gets me up over 20 CFM total. In the following video, we're going to use these compressors in various combinations to give you an idea of what you're going to be cutting at, depending on how many CFMs you can provide at your house. To demonstrate how different CFMs are going to cut, I'm going to employ a dump cart of science and a floor tile. This is a 12 by 12 inch floor tile, basically a square foot, to give you an idea of how quick the different CFMs can cut. So let's discuss what happened. Obviously, six CFMs is not gonna cut as quickly as 22. The first picture I wanna talk about is right here at six, and you can see not a lot's going on. I lost interest at a minute and 15 seconds. I couldn't mentally go any further. I, I, this is what happened when I bought the device. I just gave up and went back to a disc grinder or something like that. You can see I casually wrote the word slow, and then just lost interest. The big thing to look at is that as the time goes by to a minute and 15, the air compressor can't keep up with the sandblaster and it runs out of air. It little, the pressure keeps going down, so the cutting efficiency drops off to the point where it's pretty much worthless. And this is something to think about, is that if you went out and bought all this equipment new, you could spend $500, $600 easily on that compressor, that sandblaster, abrasives, and everything else. And basically, you're gonna be writing your name on the side of a dump cart. That's that's not really effective. So you need to be aware of this before you, you invest this type of money into the project. This is 10 cubic feet per minute. This doesn't look a whole lot different, but it is. One of the things is I was able to scribble two words instead of just slow, I think I put still sucks. I was still getting pretty frustrated. But if you look at the end of the video down in that lower left hand corner, I was cutting through the two layers of paint and down the metal at the end of the video where the six was out of air. It had lost air pressure. The 10 to 12 was still 
still holding enough air pressure to do something. I was able to clear that in about four minutes. So 10 to 12 does work. I didn't completely lose interest in this, although it doesn't look much different on the video. It's That's how I got my tractors done, and it was slow, but it worked. The final picture, of course, is the uh, 2022. It's night and day above the other two. On the first two, I was using a 3 30 seconds tip. This I converted to a quarter inch tip. And also I went, because the quarter inch tip could handle it, I went to medium grain coal slag from tractor supply as opposed to the fine grain. The medium grain would clog up those smaller tips. We cleared this out in about a minute and 15 seconds. That's a square foot. You can take your project and say, well, if I got three square feet of project, a fender, it should take about three minutes and 45 seconds. One thing to notice with this is using that medium grit, that really shot peen the side of this dump cart and you it warped it and you, I, you can't really see it in the video, but it does make a difference. So you need to be a little bit careful with the metal. So by using the square foot idea, you can get a good idea. You know, if you've got 10 square feet, that's 10, 15 minutes, something to that effect, but you can cover ground with the higher CFMs. And I think this shows that. Let's talk about the top end setup. Obviously, this is crazy. There's a lot of stuff going on here, but I wanna go over what I've changed. I wanna start at this end. I've got three air compressors. Each one's coming in on a 3 8 inch line. Each one has its own 3 8 inch lever, and it turns into a half inch pipe where they combine. So once these combine, there's not a constriction. As you come in further, we get closer to the pot. And I got an air dryer here, as well as a regulator and air pressure gauge. Now, ordinarily, you'd probably want to put something like that on this side to have dry air coming through the whole device. In this situation, I wanted maximum airflow coming in to power the sandblaster. So I bypassed this. Air goes in here and yeah, it's moist air, but it's gonna get blown right out. This will still dry the air going into the tank and hopefully keep the majority of the sand dry. Right here we have the tank pressure lever which is going to pressurize the pot. The big change I've made here, and this is important, you may want to really consider doing this, is spreading the distance from this lever out to this pot handle. These have a tendency to get clogged or interfere with one another, and they'll get in the way. So if you get a little bit more distance, that makes things a whole lot easier, especially with these smaller pots. You're going to be changing the sand a lot, and you're going to need to swing this around a lot. On that note, this pot holds a lot of pressure. There's a lot of air in here. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And you're going to hear it fill. This is now pressurized. If I try to pull this off, there's a lot of air. So I put in a bleed off valve. Now watch how long it takes for all this pressure to go out. That's a lot of air. It's pretty significant. But once it's bled off, I can go ahead and open this up. This is nice to have because if you open this with any pressure at all, sand's just going to blow up in your face. It's no fun at all. So let's talk about the mid and lower end of this. But I want to start up here. One of the things I did up above here is we went to a half inch T connector. This is the original one from the factory and it looks beefy. But on the inside, it constricts significantly. And I don't know if you can see it or not. 3 8 inch constriction down here. With the three air compressors running together, I don't want mine any less than a half inch. So from here on down, we've got a half inch of airflow going. So I went to the half inch T connector to get rid of this. Same thing with the lever here. This is the original equipment lever, 3 8 inch. It's not bad, but I went to half inch here and it's better. Here's something that's really better. This hose is a half inch hose. The Harbor Freight hose that comes with this looks pretty significant. If you look on the side, it'll even say 3 8 inch, 10 millimeters. But if you take it apart and look at the inside of it, the orifice constriction here is a quarter inch. So even though this one says 3 8 inch, it's actually a quarter inch. So this is a piece of crap. It's gone. 
we got half inch going straight down here to a new valve. The original valve isn't necessarily bad, but it has several drawbacks. One, moisture will get in this tank inevitably, and it gets in with the sand, and the moisture is going to want to come to the bottom, and it gets down into this drain. It mixes with the sand, and it's going to clog it right in here. It happens pretty commonly with this 3 8 inch valve. The problem is, there's no really good way to clean it. You have to disassemble this whole thing somehow to get at it, and then it clogs 30 seconds later. So what I've done is I've ditched it entirely. I've gone to this. This is half inch system all the way down. And one of the big differences is we have a four way half inch T and a clean out valve at the base. So we got half inch air running through at high pressure. And if something gets clogged, I can just undo this bolt and clean up in there. That doesn't mean this is totally worthless. It does work, but you just need to be careful two changes with this or, or something to be aware of, and I've talked about this in the other video. One, this main mixing valve right here inserts into this cross piece, and sometimes it can push down too far and it can cut off the airflow. Take your hose off and double check. Just shine a flashlight in there and make sure you're not seeing threads poking down in there. If that's the case, just put some extra tape on this so it doesn't insert as far, or do as I did. I sanded off some of the threads. But this will really kill you. This was by a guy named Evenflow on the internet. I'm going to have the link in the comments section. And that way you can look at what he suggests. He even has the parts listed very conveniently so you can go to your local hardware store and buy them. Last thing down here is this hose has a tendency, if this tip gets clogged, pressure builds, and even with the hose clamp, it's going, pressure is going to build and this thing's going to want to pop off. Then you got sand and stuff flying everywhere, and that's really no fun. So if you have some extra hose clamps, put them on there, even with your stock setup. Let's talk about operation. First thing I want to talk about is the safety valve that comes with the kit. It's a safety valve. I see a lot of people using it as a control valve to control the abrasive coming out. And I, if you can get that to work, that's great. I was not able to. First of all, this is brass, it wears out. Secondly, when I try to use it like that, this whole hose clogs. So if you're going to keep it on here, my recommendation is keep it on full blast the whole time. Use the other valves to control the media flow. I just went ahead and removed this and put this tip on the end of the hose, and I'm going to control it with the other valves. As the air compressor is filling up, turn on pressure to the pot. This is a couple extra gallons of capacity that if it's filled it's just going to help you out especially if you're struggling for CFMs. When you're ready to cut holding the hose in one hand go ahead and turn on your air supply. This is going to have air flying through here making sure the hose isn't clogged. Let's talk about the bottom valve operation. While you're holding your tip go ahead and put that against your project. With this hand you're going to start turning on the lower valve. Air is going to be coming through here now it's going to start dropping sand in. You're going to notice at the tip it's going to start cutting. Once you get a good cutting rate, you don't necessarily have to turn this to full blast. In my experience, if you do, it lets too much sand down sometimes. And this hose can get filled with sand, and that's not what you want. If you got too much sand coming in, and you'll sense it, cut back. Or if it's way too much sand, just cut it off. And then, once the pipe's cleared, start over. Turning it off is really easy. Just turn off the sand. Let the air clear this pipe out. Once this pipe is cleared and nothing's coming through the tip, you can go ahead and turn off the upper valves. That's all there is to it. I had an epiphany. Over a glass of wine, it occurred to me, all three of these didn't do very well. The five to six really sucked. The 10 to 12 should have done better, and even the 20 to 23 should have done better. Something was holding these back. The epiphany was this. On the right is the Harbor Freight tip. It's small. On the left is the Kinemetal tip. It's bigger. It's a lot more expensive. But look at the inside bores. Let's talk about what happens on the insides of these tips. Imagine you have a pipe. Through it comes abrasives. It gets to the tip. 
specifically the Harbor Freight tip. And if you think about the inside, you're going to have a flange, a 45 degree angle, bevel, and then a nozzle tip. The particle in the middle is going to fly straight through at full velocity. The particle to the side is going to hit this bevel. And at 45 degrees, it's going to bounce off and do one of these numbers. It's still going to get through, but it's going to lose a lot of forward velocity as it goes back and forth, as it ricochets through. The same thing with the one on this side. A lot of ricocheting going on. These particles are not going to come out as fast as that one in the middle. Look at these particles. We hit the flange and they actually go backwards. So between 20 and 40 percent of the particles are going to get stopped dead in their tracks right at the tip of the nozzle. They go backwards and they're going to hit other particles which is going to slow them down. There's going to be a lot of turbulence there. It's not very efficient. Now let's look at the kinemat tip. You have the same pipe with the same particles. But the kinemat tip is much bigger. And the nozzle orifice is much longer. The particle in the middle, of course, is going to come straight through. But as you can see, the particles inside are going to hit the shallower angle. And they're going to retain more of their forward momentum as they come through. The particles on the side aren't going to get bounced back. They're going to keep on going forward. So you're going to have more of a laminar flow and many more particles hitting whatever it is you're trying to clean. The other aspect to look at is the orifice length of the nozzle. This one's longer. So these particles, if they're slowed, have more of a chance to reaccelerate and come out in a linear fashion as opposed to this one. Okay, that was fun. The quarter inch kinemetal tip was incredible. That, that cut that square foot in 53 seconds. It's a full 25 seconds faster than my homemade tip, or 1.4 times the cutting speed. I'm gonna come clean with it. As fun as that was, anybody who knows what they're doing is, is gonna catch me on it. That tip uses a lot of air, and it uses a lot more than 20 CFM. And you could easily probably use 35, 40 CFM to keep that thing going. I was running out of air in about two minutes. I'll show you the dials here. If you went that far, you'd have to let it recharge, which takes me about four minutes. So with that in mind, that, that was a fun trick. You could certainly, if you had the CFMs, you know, a 30, 40 CFM system, you could use that tip all day. It'd be great. But that's not what I have right now. What I found useful really was that 3 16 tip. It cut just about as fast. Instead of 53 seconds, it was 58. It's only 5 seconds more. It's still 20 seconds faster than my homemade tip, or 1.3 times the cutting rate. To cut a square foot in under a minute is, is pretty darn good. If I had to go use a tip tomorrow, I'd probably use the uh, 3 16 just because the compressors could keep up in a more realistic fashion. It still pulled them down, but not, not as much. You can cover some ground with that tip. One thing to keep in mind, these really do warp metal. So if you're going out, don't put these on a fender or a car door because you're going to warp it. You can really damage metal quick. Use it on something like a chassis, a thicker metal, like you know an engine block or you know an axle or something like that. But you you will definitely warp to thinner metal. This is fun. I think it's amazing. You can take a $70 sandblaster. And by modifying the air intakes and you know putting some nice tips on it, and I think this shows that the kinemetal tips definitely pay off. 
you, you can have a really effective machine that, that really can handle those higher CFMs. I, I see no reason why not to put 30 or 40 CFMs into this. Enjoy. Let's talk about the dead man valve. This is something I really want to like. Everybody else on the internet likes it. I like the idea of it. You can get up in an engine compartment, and turn it on and off, and you have a lot of control over it. So I bought one, and I reviewed it. And I, who might have disagreed with the internet, but I, I don't really like it. There's two problems with it, at least for me. One, I'm clogging up the hose again. This is a problem I didn't have since I bought the sandblaster. This is what upset me so much to make me go do these whole videos, and I don't want to mess with that. I solved all these problems. The second problem is the ceramic tips here aren't as good as the kinemetal tips. So I was taking one step back. So I've solved the problem of things getting clogged. I have a more efficient cutting nozzle. And this thing is just kind of second rate. So if you like it, great. Try it out. Make your own video. Um, I'm going to show you some videos of it in action. It doesn't cut as effectively as the kinemetal tip. So. All right. So here we are cutting away with the dead man valve with the largest tip that comes in the pack. It's a little bit over one eighth of an inch and it's cutting at 10 to 12 CFM. It looks impressive, but if you look close, what's happening is it's just cutting the blue paint. That's spray rattle can paint, which doesn't have a lot of integrity. It's not even getting to the red paint on the original dump cart. So it looks impressive, but it's not. Let's compare this to the kinemetal tip, one eighth inch cutting at the same CFMs. So here we are using the kinemetal tip, 1 8 inch at the same CFMs. It's immediately cutting through this metal. I'm going to fast forward to the end. It cleared out a square foot in three minutes. And compare this to the original Harbor Freight ceramic tip at 10 to 12 CFM. To demonstrate how the lower hose gets filled up with sand, I want to use the Slurpee Cup experiment. I filled up the Slurpee Cup with sand and hooked it directly into the stock lower mixing valve. As you can see, the nozzle's on, so gravity's going to pull the sand from the Slurpee Cup down into the nozzle. What happens is, the sand gets down at the base and fills up that cross piece to the point where the sand cuts itself off. As long as no air is coming through this cross piece, that chunk of sand down there is just going to be stuck. It's not going to do anything. It's not going to cause this hose to get clogged. But the second any air goes through it at all, watch what happens. As you can see, the second air goes through here, it's going to push the sand out and more sand is going to come down. So if you have a leakage in the threads down here or the valve down here isn't tightly closed, you're going to be constantly filling that hose with sand. That plug of sand getting pulled down through the hose is the reason I got rid of these tips. Because when you try to control them like this, it causes that leak and it just fills the hose back here up. So that's why I ditched these. As far as the dead main valves is concerned, make sure you've got thread tape here to prevent leaks. And also, make sure that this it's snug. you got to pull against it so there's no air coming out here. Again, any air is just going to cause a leak and it's going to cause sand to backfill the hose behind it. All right, so we got the Kinemat rematch. I'm not going to do a square foot. These at five to six, we're, I'm just going to do uh, 12 inches by six inches to be more reasonable. <laughs> this is a 332nd tip. Look how much better the kinemetal tip cuts than the Harbor Freight tip. It's actually usable. Uh, I went ahead, since the compressors couldn't keep up at five to six, I went ahead and just threw on the eighth anyway for the fun of it. I, I feel like I'm cutting better with the eight inch. I don't know if it is or not, but it, that's probably the way I do it at five to six. The, the air compressors are gonna get outrun either way, so you might as well enjoy it while you have it. And it, it does okay. You can get some small projects done. And it's 2.30 to clear a half a square foot, so five minutes for a square foot. 
the 10 to 12 CFMs cut really nice. I think this is where you start to really make some progress. This is, I went back to, I thought I was going to cut a half a square foot, and I was so encouraged I went ahead and finished the whole square foot. It took a little bit over three minutes. And look how much better it cuts than the stock Harbor Freight tip. You can see in the inset picture how little got done, and, and here we are pretty much clearing this area out. Huge improvement. I wanted to get a 15 CFM video because that's a size air compressor that a lot of people you can buy off the shelf. This worked great. Uh, I liked it. It was a very consistent cutting. It cleared out a square foot in a little bit under three minutes. And at the end of it, I was still holding full air pressure. I looked over at the nozzle. It's still above 90 pounds. Uh, so you could sit there and cut all day at 15 CFMs, one eighth inch. And, um, not lose air pressure like some of the other ones do. I really, I think this is a good combination if you're trying to get things done. And finally, the 20 to 23 with the quarter inch tip and the medium grain. This flies. I think it's cool because you really could, if you had a 30 or 40 CFM air compressor, the Harbor Freight Sandblaster could handle it and it would use this tip and you could do this all day. We've all got projects and we're going to have different resources and budgets to get whatever we need to get done. There's no one right answer for all of us. My dad was a huge Harbor Freight fan. He was a huge fanatic and he loved to collect things and he was a bit of a hoarder and he's definitely a, a penny pincher. But in sandblasting, this is a, definitely an area where you, you don't want to necessarily be penny wise and pound foolish. You want to step back and look at the big picture and then come in with a plan of attack on whatever project it is you have. There's a great video on the internet on YouTube, and I'm going to share it link in the comments section. And the presenter talks about just this. With sandblasters, you can get caught in a trap where you, you buy one thing, it's not good enough, so you buy something else, and you're constantly going in circles, and you're not getting the results that you want. That's a good video to check out. As far as my video today, the whole goal is to give you the information I wish I had several months ago. Be able to look at this and decide, is, is this right for you or or is it not? And if you already got one, say, hey, yeah, I can just buy this or do that and to get you where you want to be or decide it's time to put it away and, and move on. I'm not a Kinemetal spokesperson. I'm not a Harbor Freight spokesperson. I don't care if you buy this stuff or not. But two things to think about. You're going to need a good air compressor. You're going to need access to one, whether you borrow one or buy one or, or however that happens. As far as the sandblaster is concerned, this is a $70 sandblaster. It's not $700 or $7,000 or $70,000 that some people will pay. It's the cheapest piece of junk in the galaxy. But if you invest a little bit more, let's say you invest $100 in all these fancy pipes for better airflow, and let's say you buy the Kinemetal tips for you know $50 or $70, bucks, you are going to be in this about $300 tops, even if you buy the 110-pound Harbor Freight model. And I'd buy that just for the capacity and the wheels. So you're in this whole thing $300 bucks, there's nothing off the shelf you're going to be able to buy that's going to even come close. So on that note, this thing kicks ass. I hope you found the information helpful. If you do, please consider liking or commenting on it or even sharing it to keep this relevant in the YouTube news feed and their algorithms so people can find it. When I first have a got good day. this sandblaster, it was very frustrating. <laughs>